Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. If you're new to recording or you don't have just this mastery of polar patterns and mic placement, this video is gonna be really important for you to learn and to watch. I was able to borrow this Lewitt microphone, it's the 640, and it has actually two capsules back to back. So it looks like one capsule, but it's actually two. So it's a two channel microphone and it's recording the front and the back separately. You could record a vocalist and then later you can manipulate these two tracks in certain ways that give you different polar patterns after the fact, after you're done recording. And so for me, I thought this is a perfect teaching tool to really do certain recordings, certain tests, and then really kind of experiment and show how different polar patterns can either make it worse or better, and really how to use polar patterns. So let's go into the control room. I have a few tests pulled up and I'll show you what I mean. So there's a couple different ways you can manipulate the polar pattern or the sound of the mic after the fact. This is pretty cool. I kind of prefer the manual method, but they have a plugin that they have that's actually quite cool and it has its advantages as well. And so here we have uh, the front of the mic and the back of the mic. I'll turn this off here. So they are both equal volume here at Unity Gain. And I have my friend Jordan singing some vocals. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, he and I goofing off doing some tests. So this isn't a final vocal performance or anything like that. But let's have a listen to this vocal in omnidirectional mode with the Lewitt 640. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. When the world around me has been nothing but scars. In the darkest night, I know there will be light. Okay, really not bad. Now, I really deadened my room quite a bit because I didn't want to distract you with the room sound. Usually, if I were to put a vocal mic into omnidirectional, I'm going to pick up and actually kind of hear a little bit of that room. But here, it's a very dead kind of environment. So, the, that was the front and the back at the same time. Now, let me just turn off the back. So this is just the front, and this would be cardioid. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. Okay, here's Omni. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. Okay, so big difference there. Omni has no proximity effect, so you can have the vocalist get really close to the mic, and it's not gonna overwhelm the sound with low end. It has no proximity effect. However, if the microphone has directional characteristics, then the microphone picks up basically a difference of pressure of the front and the back. And the closer the vocalist gets, the more that pressure difference becomes, and therefore we have a boost in low frequency. Here we have cardioid, so it is listening a little bit around the back, and it's able to tell the difference of pressure between the front and the back. Therefore, in cardioid, we have some proximity effect. Now, the most proximity effect is going to be in figure eight. It's listening to both sides of the microphone. And it's going to be very sensitive to any sort of pressure difference that's coming in the front versus the back. This is why ribbon mics have so much proximity effect. Now, if I turn on both sides of the microphone, both capsules, we're going to go back to square one. We'll have omnidirectional. But if I flip the polarity of the back, so this capsule will be uh, have a polarity flipped. Now we have a figure eight microphone, and we should have a lot more proximity effect. Let's check it out. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. Omnidirectional. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. Back to figure eight. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. Cool, so we have the extremes of polar patterns, omnidirectional, figure eight. Then in the middle is cardioid. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. 
Okay, so why does this matter? I mean, it is kind of cool in a nerdy way, me being a teacher and trying to explain how polar patterns work to your advantage when recording sounds. But for this, I would say that this could be really cool if your vocalist moves a lot, if maybe for a whole half a song they were further away or closer to the mic, you can make adjustments. And not just EQ, but actual proximity effect that the mic is getting. It's almost as if they were a little bit closer or a little bit further away. So if they crowd the mic, this is, I mean, this is a little uh, kind of muddy sounding in cardioid. So what we can do is we can start out with the cardioid and we can mix in a little bit of the back. And we actually take the cardioid and we shift it a little bit more towards the omnidirectional mode. So we're gonna leave the polarity unflipped and we're gonna just start it with cardioid and I'll bring it up slowly to kind of help ease some of the low end and bring back some of the clarity. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. When the world around me has been nothing but scars. In the darkest night, I know there will be light. The dawn will find me when I want to take flight. So there it's a little thin at the end. So maybe somewhere right in here would be a good a good option for us. Now what's cool about that is that Lute actually gives us a, a chart. And uh, I've had, had it pulled up here the whole time. But uh, we actually can see that I, a wide cardioid, which is between cardioid and omnidirectional, a wide cardioid will have the back diaphragm phase the same as the front, and it'll be uh, 10 dB below the front diaphragm. So that's kind of we, where we were at. We had uh, about negative six, negative seven. So this actually here would be a subcardioid. Subcardioid is the cardioid polar pattern that's between cardioid and omnidirectional. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. Cardioid. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. So that's pretty cool. You can see how that'd be kind of useful. Now we can also go the other direction. We can go from cardioid and go towards figure eight. Now the maneuver on the faders is pretty similar. Uh, the front is at unity gain. The back is negative. Uh, negative 10 or 10 dB lower, but instead of having the same polarity, we actually um, flip the polarity. So let's hear the difference between cardioid and supercardioid. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. So yeah, if you need that sort of thing, it's there, it's available to us. Of course, we have the figure eight, which is unity gain front and back with the back polarity flipped. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. Okay, so that's how to manually do it. And I think that's really cool. And this is kind of nerdy, but still really cool, really helpful. What's cool about this is this is all the manual mode here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. I have two other tracks with the same recording set up. And what I did is I sent this to a bus. I pan the front mic to the left and the back mic to the right. They're both at unity gain and they're going into this aux channel, which goes into the plugin by Lewitt. Now, this is cool because even though it's panned left, panned right, it's actually just using the panning system to separate out what it's intaking. And it's still gonna give us a mono vocal sound. It's not gonna give us a stereo vocal sound. So this is actually converting it to a mono and we'll hear it as a mono track. But it gives us this slider that we can actually in real time go through and visually see the different polar patterns. It's pretty cool, well, let's check it out. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. When the world around me has been nothing but scars. 
in the darkest night. I know there will be light. The dawn will find me when I want to take flight. One cool thing is that it doesn't really matter what the front of the mic is or the back of the mic is. It's just a matter of signals and a bit of math here. So this actually goes beyond what we can do manually. And in fact, it actually switches to make the mic point away from the source instead of towards the source. So here the cardioid is pointing directly away from the vocalist. And here the cardioid is pointing towards the vocalist. So it's a pretty sweet. If you had um, a reason to use this, maybe you wanted to record the room of a source and have kind of a free vocal effect, or maybe a drum room, and you wanted to decide that I want to know the whole kit out. And actually, I wish I would have faced the mic away from the drum set. Well, here we go. We can face towards the drum set, away from the drum set, towards the vocalist, away from the vocalist. It's a bit confusing when you see all these different icons here. The normal range of polar patterns is really here to here, okay? That is on axis, and then everything else is basically pointing away from the source. So let me show you what that sounds like. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. When the world around me has been nothing but scars. So that's facing away from the vocalist. That's what it would sound like if you accidentally took a normal microphone and pointed the wrong side at the vocalist. Uh, but here, we can manipulate that after the fact. Pretty cool. And of course, as we get towards the Omni, it becomes more and more like the beginning position and pretty much wraps itself around uh, as far as the effect that it's having. I'm seeking hope. It's where I choose to go. When the world around me has been nothing but scars. So this is the plugin. You can do it either way, the manual way or the plugin. I kind of like the manual way just because it's a matter of just turning up and down the back of the mic and flipping the polarity of that track for the back of the microphone. It's really easy to manipulate it that way. Uh, but if you like the visual aspect of this, you can create a bus, sum it into uh, an aux track, and put the plugin on it, and it's actually a pretty slick plugin. Yeah, so I thought uh, this 640 is fantastic. Uh, it is kind of a very clean, um, natural sounding mic. It's not a color mic, I don't think. But what it does, it does really well. I mean, I was surprised how good it sounded on toms. Uh, vocals, it kind of likes to be close. Um, as we saw here, not too close, but it likes to be on the closer end of things, which is good for maybe uh, poor traded rooms. Um, it, it really does a lot of things quite well. And I thought that this polar pattern manipulation bit, I think this is really cool. Now, am I going to want to do this for every single thing I do? Probably not. I mean, I'd probably just do one channel. I'd probably pick a polar pattern and run with it. But if I were to do a, you know, a certain application where I might want some options later, or I want to give the mixing engineer some options, then hey, I'll record two tracks and they can figure it out later. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Be hanging out in the comments below.